What's up, everybody? Tyson Roush, Let's Talk Jets. As we sit and digest another loss, another lost season, a team that has more questions than answers, and the potential of another rebuild, it becomes increasingly frustrating where you really start to wonder why we even support this team anymore. Because what would make you, like, if you were a new person, a new fan saying, I want to become a fan of a team, and you look at the portfolio or the profile of the Jets, why would you want to, why would you want to be a fan of them? You know, this is a team that's only been five, over 500 twice, twice since 2010. A high point for this team is winning eight games. Well, I mean, no playoffs in 14 years, all like the, the losing culture, all the different things you look at, it's like it's not an easy sell. You look at the owner. Is it an owner, a likable guy, somebody you want to be like, all right, I believe in him and his, his thought process and how he handles things. He literally told us thinking is overrated this season. He's a guy that raised ticket prices during a losing season. Can you imagine the audacity to talk to your loyal season ticket holders where you have not had a big game in the stadium in a decade? That, you know what, I know next year seems kind of weird. There's not a lot of uncertainty, a lot of unknowns, but I'm raising ticket prices for you. I want you to pay more for the unknown. Can you imagine that? Like, that, the balls to even do that? The owner is not a selling point. The stadium is a nightmare. It's a glorified air conditioner. It's, you know, hard to get in, hard to get out, expensive. And it's just, you compare that to other stadiums all across the country, it fails miserably. Um, again, you have the game, there's not, it hasn't been a big game at MetLife Stadium probably since, what, 2015, the Patriot game, if that. So that's a failure. Then you look at what is, what is like the, the players? Like, what do you, like, are there any players you can really say, you know what, this is a guy I can really count on to get this thing turned around? Like, what is the vision? And I'll keep saying this, like, I'm an old fan, man. So I went, I was through the co tight years, I've been through all this. This is worse than all of that because there is no, there is no like you can hang your hat on this. Like the Gase years were bad. Be like you know what the whole Sam Darnold thing. You know you had well this is bad, but we had Zach Wilson. And time after time it didn't work out. Zach, Sam Darnold, Geno Smith, none of them work out. Coaches come in, coaches come out, they don't come out. General managers come in, general, general managers go out, they don't work out. It's like you don't you're just like a rudderless ship with no captain on board. And now it's like you look forward and who's your face in the franchise? It can't be Aaron Rodgers. It's like the guys that you had faith in, the young players you had faith in, you don't anymore. Sauce Gardner. I mean, Brees Hall's a good player, but he's not a guy that you can build your organization around. So now it's just, what do you do? Like, what, like, what is the selling point? And I, I honestly don't know. Because now you're facing it where this team, and you don't understand why other teams can do it. The Jets have been rebuilding for a decade. How come it's so quick for the Lions? How come it's so quick for the Commanders? The, for the Texans? They get the right guy, boom, turned around like that. Two years, they're, they're winning games and they're, they're playing great football. For the Jets, it's like trust the process, and the process is never ending. They're doing five-year rebuilds, and they don't even do that right. And now you're in the same spot again where you need a complete overhaul of the organization. Scouts, you know, obviously general manager, coaches, everything. You've got to blow it all up and have faith the Jets finally get it right when you have questions about the guy that's actually making the decisions. You have a, a team that is unmarketable and has a job that not a lot of people are going to want to take. So how do you handle that? Like, what, like where is the, the guiding light for this team? Like, we were hoping it was Aaron Rodgers for two years, and that was it. We knew it was a two-year window. Our, this whole organization said, for the next two years, we're going to do whatever we can to win the Super Bowl, because after that, it's going to be bleak. And guess what? That failed, and now we're at bleak. And now what's the light? You got to beg. You have to, you have to hope that Woody Johnson finally concedes and says, you know what? I got to hire a director of football operations that is going to control all the football decisions. Football guys making football decisions, and he butts out. Then you got to hope that guy hires a quality general manager that is willing to make a commitment to his organization for five or six years. Because this is, again, you had to overcome, you had to overcome Idzik. You had to overcome McCagnan. Now you have to overcome Joe Douglas, and a lot of these guys aren't going to be here next year. So you've got to rebuild this roster yet again. So you need to hope that you have a director of football operations that wants to come here. I saw the one article today mentioning Curtis Martin, which I think is a great idea. Then you have to hope he gets a good general manager, and then you need the coach. And these guys have got to be culture changers. Literally guys that are no-nonsense, all about winning, don't, give a, don't care about marketing, they don't care about new uniforms. It's their way or the highway, win or at all costs. You know, and you, they, they, were, they were available last year. Like, look what Sean Payton's doing with Bo Nix. Look what Harbaugh's doing. That's the kind of guys you need here. And there's not a lot of those guys available. So I don't know what to tell you, man. Like, I am so disgusted and down and out right now because I just don't, like, when Kotite was here, Parcells saved the day. You need that kind of person to do this here. 
And that guy's not out there right now. So I don't know what the Jets do. And it's going to be really hard to buy into a plan going forward if it's a first-time head coach, you know, like a, a general manager, his first time being a general manager. He was a guy that got water for the guy that got water for the general manager. Like, you, like you're so, you're not, I guess, cautious or kind of pessimistic because we've been down this rebuilding path a couple times and it hasn't worked out. Then it's like the whole quarterback situation. Do you draft one? Do you go try to find a veteran? I mean, I, at this point, I'd sell my soul and trade for Trevor Lawrence. I don't care. Like, whatever, like, however you can do it. But there are literally no answers to the Jet man. You put on your shirt. You're like, why? Like, you don't, you know, you're going to get, you're going to get ridiculed. The Jets are a laughing stock in the NFL. Like, what is it? What's the, what's the thing that keeps coming you back for more? It's that we always talk about it. We talk about it with Fireman Ed. It's like that one day. We want to be there for that one day when the Jets finally win a championship. At this point, we just want to be there one day when the Jets can actually make the playoffs and have a home playoff game. Like, that's how lower standard is now. It's bad, man. I don't know. This is, I mean, this team is unlikable and can break the most diehard of fans when you look at all the things they've done and what they have. Like, there's literally no return on your investment when you're a Jet fan. You don't get the happiness. You don't share the same joy that everybody else does all across the NFL. You just don't.